here we go. Hello and welcome to a new episode of Crepuscular Bonus Discuss. Today we are going to talk about yesterday's episode, Just for Sidekicks. And today I'm joined by, for the first time, three guests. We have got Biter. Lark. Digibroni. Hello. And for the first time, Scan120. So, welcome to the show, everybody. Hello. And, yeah, who wants to go first? Not it. Not really oh. me. I I feel apathy. And why you go first? It's your show. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, after all, I haven't even started writing my own review since I either have finished the one from last week. But hey, next week will be everything will be better. Um. Yeah. I just saw it once again, and I don't really like it. <laughs> it's uh. I don't know. Um, the elements about this episode um, I could enjoy where um, single images, single jokes, uh, mainly surrounded, uh, uh, maybe a, a mostly around the pets. And I don't know, Spike was like uh, Spike at your service all over uh, again, but worse in a different way. Yeah, it, um, it, is, it has got quite a bit, few parallels to Spike at your service in at least the reasons where you dislike it. And he was kind of thrown back to um, Secret of My Excess when he uh, turned all greedy and everybody is now like, okay, take our rubies, why not? Uh, and I, I totally got confused that the rubies are on the one hand apparently some kind of universal currency, and on the other hand they are just uh, food. <laughs> well, they've, they've sort of always been that, and they've always been around, but yeah, they, they take quite a important role in the show here. Mm. Um, yeah, uh, doing the... Um, <laughs> yeah, yes, I, my, my views on the thing yes! was... I'm not the impro uh, unprofessional one this time. Is anyone else's uh, <laughs> volume getting kind of weird? No. Uh, no, mine's been fine. Okay. Oh, but anyway, uh, volume? I was going to say, the pony, the Ponyville economy... Volume? What? Are you okay? <laughs> Who? What? I'm going to assume it's okay, so I'm going to talk. Uh, yeah, I, I was going to say the Ponyville economy is confusing and must be in shambles because of jewels. Because we know that bits exist. We saw them in putting your hoof down. So there's clearly a, a form of money, and yet there's jewels which Rarity can just magically dig out of everywhere and has a million of. So like, if they're really worth something, then Rarity is a multi-billionaire and, yeah. and we don't have no reason. The, the funny thing is one. you can buy an industrial sized pet uh, dryer. Yeah, with just with, one little tiny jewel. The one. And where do they get all their supplies to cover the creatures in paint? <laughs> if, if the whole ruby was spent on the industrial uh, dryer, yeah. Well, I yeah. don't know. Where, I thought they were going on that scene going to say, you know, we spent it on all the painted yeah. bits and bobs to keep them entertained. And instead, out of nowhere, the industrial <laughs> hair dryer, which is just ridiculously silly and we've not really seen before in the show. Well, I don't, I'm not going to fault the show on introducing ridiculously silly stuff we haven't seen before because that happens on an almost episode-by-episode -episode basis. Except the thing is, at least as um, before, particularly in season one, that Faust had a idea for the show that it didn't have the futuristic stuff. That um, What it did introduce was set within that kind of fantasy universe. Well, it did have, um, this season one had giant... in uh, Feeling Pinky Keen, they had the giant machines that Twilight used that she hooked Pinky up to, the uh, the, yeah. like, the stat machines and stuff, so those that were kind of similar. Yeah, but yeah. Um, oh, we've at lost least a... that was to serve a direct, yeah, I know. Um, um, technical difficulties. He, he should be too. Um But yeah, at least on that one... It, it actually served a purpose in the plot, and it, you yeah. know, it was there for a reason. This one, though, um, you could change it with something else it, that yeah. would work in universe, and it would make sense. Mm. That uh, you're not, you don't lose anything by having the hair dryer, other than having the scene where we're known as being blown against the ground, which yeah. is done there just for simple. Lol, look, industrial hair dryer. <laughs> um, yeah. But to be fair, yeah, I enjoyed that's... the gag and be known as view. <laughs> but I still got um, If it was just a joke, I would have been fine. But it, I, at the same moment, I was like, jewels are worth this much? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, but I what? think they kind of wanted to evoke that 
that reaction where they wanted you to go, oh, that's what that's worth? Oh, you know, like... the writing's crap. Good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're sucking along with you. That's brilliant. <laughs> um, yeah, what I, I'm having difficulties actually analyzing the episode itself. I'm, I'm, it's not as clear as a Dave Polsky episode that it's going straight for slapstick. Mm. But I think it probably is. The problem I have is, at least with Dave Polsky, it's obvious he's trying to be funny. With this one, it's also sort of trying to tell a bit of a story going on. Um, and the story's not well, very good, and the humor isn't there. So I, As far I'm as the confused. metric goes, for me personally, I laughed more during this episode than probably any other this season. For me, it was the funniest episode of the season. Well, so as far as comedy goes, I, I think it's there. So, Well, that's of season three, isn't it? <laughs> well, I love that's season, of season three. three. So. <laughs> Unlike um, you, I'm a very big fan of season three. Yeah, um, that's the thing. Uh, I was I found the humor didn't work for me, and I think it's a, a link. And the probably the humor of season three is because it's much more direct slapsticky. Mm. That uh, the the show is trying to play stories and actions on screen directly to be funny. That the writer themselves has written it. Um, you know, very much like the um, the industrial strength hair dryer. Yeah. Before we didn't have that. You know, when we had the industrial, you know, machinery with Twilight, the one time it broke it in season one, that was to serve the scene where Twilight is testing Pinkie Pie. Yeah. I mean, yeah, sure. They, you know, it, that scene wasn't played for laughs. It was played because that was what was needed yeah. in the story. Yep. I hate to break you up. Um, just one chance to, because Gan has to uh, technical difficulties, uh, try to say something. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, we do. <gasps> okay, there. The lag's gone. I think there was too You're many windows. You're back to a puppy. Yeah, I'm not going to try to mess with that again. <laughs> Interesting enough, I would have uh, guessed that the puppy uh, messes up more things because it's animated than a, a simple screen share, but yeah. Yeah, but I... I think it doesn't because it's actually part of this program. Yeah, probably. So, welcome back Scan 20, uh, with Scan120, the puppy. That's yeah. a... Okay, so, yeah, you. Yeah. that's a good time you're back. Uh, now you can, um, yeah. What were your thoughts on the episode? Join, join, in, and, join in and share your I, I saw the episode as, I thought it was really fun. I had a bunch of DAW, but it wasn't... It didn't really contribute to the series, but it was funny enough to make up for that. It also just had a few uh, plot plugs in there to fill some stuff up. Yeah. You know, like at the beginning with the picture frame showing us Pee-wee, who disappeared yeah. after his only appearance. <laughs> Which is uh, really yeah. sad. They clearly couldn't think of anything to do with him, and they were just like, whatever, write him back out. <laughs> they, yeah, they wrote him out. And what a... What a waste. And then we also got to see, uh, you know, a little more Tank and Rainbow Dash interaction. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, that part was excellent. I love that. But Everything about Tank and Rainbow Dash in this episode was probably my favorite part. Too bad it was about two seconds each? Well, the, it's what happens and what it says about them, because the way I read Rainbow Dash is that she's always trying to grapple with her inauthenticity, uh, where she wants to be, like, you know, because she's so, like, she loves being the badass pony who's like, yeah, I'm the, I'm the coolest, but at the same time, she has to kind of embrace her, her lame and girly side. And it's something that she's had trouble with, obviously, through... Um, read it and weep where she started reading but now she's reached the point where she can read in public confidently you know she's not as much uh, she's not trying to be as inauthentic anymore yeah, so when it, it comes to tank purpose. yeah when it comes to tank it yeah. really is showing her trying to strike this balance where on the one hand she's still trying to look somewhat cool and tank is so uncool but on the other hand it's like she's it. like whatever I, I, yeah. I love him so yeah <laughs> that um, brief moment where yeah. she says goodbye to tank uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we all saw the episode. The thing is, though, that's what I've liked about previous seasons. Rather than just having two parts of two seconds, why couldn't we have a whole episode on that? The majority of the episode isn't stuff like that. Yeah. But that's nice to have still. I think it's great for just... Uh, it's nice to have. have. But um, the problem is, is that the majority of our time is still spent watching the majority of the episode. 
Yeah. But so, I still like the majority of the episode. You're extremely majority, negative about it in general, but I love I, it. I saw well, it as a... Because I have no complaints about yeah. this episode at the all. The difference here is, obviously, whether we found it funny or not. Correct? We yeah, haven't yet discussed... Yeah. Well, you said you found it funny, and I said I'm not even sure if it was trying to be funny. <laughs> yeah. Well, so you see, you... the other part is it also seemed to be an episode that was truly, really trying to push the cute, too. Because you had RD in that, also the Cutie Mark Crusaders. I don't know how many people were like me, but the whole time that Sweetie Belle is saying, oh, hey, Angel Cute and everything, it's like, is yeah. anything more cute? And you're thinking, Sweetie Belle, you're being more cute than it is right now. <laughs> uh. See, I, I agree with him because I do, I get complete squee when I'm like, when I see the ponies being adorable, I'm just, ah! you know. <laughs> I, 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 didn't, oh, we, I didn't come yeah. to this show in spite of the cute. I came to this show with in embracing the cute, you know, so that to me is still an important part yeah. of it. Well, there's, um, yeah. it's not a question of in spite, it's a question of what it serves and how it, what it, part it plays in people's enjoyment of the show. Yes, people can enjoy it for its cuteness. However, if it plays the episode, the robot. if it plays it, what am I sounding like a robot? <laughs> no, but you are a robot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. But the the thing is, though, um, it is quite capricious, though, or at least wasteful, if all it does is rely on cuteness. Mm. If the cuteness sometimes serves a purpose, like Sweetie Belle convincing Rarity, I quite like that. Yeah. Otherwise, I don't like it when they ostentatiously do stuff to be cute. Since what they should do, if they are yeah. focusing on a character episode, for example, is work on characters. The cuteness is important to the plot of this episode, though, because the fact that the Cutie Mark Crusaders are these... They're, they're sort of an, an adorable force of nature against Spike, where Spike... Really, he he goes into this thinking that he's going to manipulate them because he thinks that they're these little kids. They're just these, you know, they're portrayed as just these adorable little kids. And he's like, all right, I'm going to get these kids to to take my, you know, trash for me or whatever. And, and then the little kids act like they, the little kids, don't they? Yeah, so, but they completely, yeah. they totally turn on him. And that's what's so great about it is that he expects that he's going to manipulate them throughout the episode. But they continually. <laughs> oh, my sister made you give me money. <laughs> Except, it's a, it's a yeah. Apple just Bloom. In the chat and uh, just somebody, that dog is staring into my soul. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I can see. Uh, yeah. Oh. I don't. I don't really buy that. That um, the episode particularly tries to use their cuteness or as a theme through the episode. I think um, it just adds to, for to example, who they are. If we, well, you said it was an important part. So yeah, like it's, it, it's, it's an important, important part, in that it, or who are, they are. That's it's the same. Much. Like it's important in that it contributes to them being no, you these cute little original, kids. You know. You said in your original claim. We'll forget my original. To these <laughs> then why did you claim that? <laughs> Don't claim that is wrong. <laughs> no, I do think it's important. It's important wait, because wait, wait, of what no, it brings you, out in them. Yeah. So wait, you claim something. Is that cr true or false now? Having since you've changed your mind. Well, I don't understand it, why you think it's it integral. Down. Is it integral to the plot, their cuteness? Yeah, the fact that they are cute then is why integral did you say to the it idea. Matter now? It does matter now, because that's what you started with. If you started with it, then don't drop it. Elaborate on it and let me debunk it. <laughs> my point is simply that. <laughs> my point is simply that the ponies. The ponies are. Adorable children, and that's what makes you feel that Spike's trying to manipulate How them. Is that Their really cuteness contributes the to that. Because that's the How plot. Is that Spike, to the Spike's plot. trying to manipulate them. That is the plot. That is literally yeah, the plot. But I would argue that they are portrayed as They're... little kids, and then they act as little kids. They haven't duped him. They haven't duped him, but they've shown that he didn't know what he was doing, that he wasn't able to manipulate them where he thought he could, which shows that he's just not as, as strong as he thought he was. He thought he was going to be Except this guy it who really could easily play, overpower it the kids. It's a play of strength, however, because it's a matter of he leaves the pets with the kids, hoping that they will take the problem off his shoulders. Yeah. However, for some reason, he is now walking along with all the baked batter and jewels, for some reason, even though he could just return to the uh, to the treehouse where all those materials are, and he goes, and then he hears that they're actually doing something to tank. 
So it is obvious that yeah. he, he gives Where's it to the, the turtle's little... head? Yeah, <laughs> he gives it to the little kids, and then he finds out later that they've been acting like little kids. Yeah. It's not a matter of his personal... Uh, you know, he tried to offlay his responsibility. Yeah, that and is he what failed. He yeah, he offlaid his responsibility to those who weren't responsible. Yeah. In that case, it was a, a lack of judgment on his part. However, yeah. it, the point isn't that it's about their cuteness. The point, is, the point, the reason he did that was because he was offlaying responsibility. Yeah. And it was a bad decision. Why did he make a bad decision? Because he's an idiot in this episode. I don't know that he's an idiot, but he's not... Oh, he, he, I mean, is, he is an idiot. Lacking but, of judgment, yeah. Yeah, lacking in judgment, certainly. But. And of common decency, correct. <laughs> I also think there will be a little bit of uh, annoyance in the fandom from this uh, episode, just like they had with uh, Sweet and Elite, where it kind of seems like he didn't quite learn his comeuppance at the end of the episode. I thought he got his comeuppance. I love that at the end, at the very end, they still make him not get the cake. Did something just happen to the audio for somebody? No. I can hear. No? You're fine. So I, I heard an echo or something. Okay. Anyway, uh, yeah, the fact that he accidentally eats his jewel still at the end, still doesn't get to make his jewel cake. I just thought that was, that was great. Because even though the animals forgave him, the viewer does not necessarily forgive him yet. And then at the end, he still gets, he still doesn't get his way. So I thought that was a nice touch at the end. Mm. The <laughs> difficulty we had uh, with Spike at your service was that we added in a contrivance for the, um, the action of slapstick. And said yeah. contrivance degraded Spike's character in a way that is contrary to prior established knowledge. Yeah. In this episode, Spike is portrayed as of lacking judgment and often as quite capricious to the other ponies. Mm. I would argue that in previous, ep in previous seasons, Spike has always been quite a reliable figure, that he has been the number one assistant, that he has being one that you can entrust a, a certain amount of responsibility to, and who is fairly good at interpersonal interaction. No, that's not very consistent when it comes to Spike. Like, he had... Remember, um... What's that episode called? The one where Twilight travels to the future. It's about time. Where, oh, yeah, it's about. He, you know, he kind of acts that way where he just lacks foresight and lacks, uh, you know... Because he likes ice to, cream. Yeah, <laughs> he lacks the ability to think ahead and stuff. Spike's a flip-flop. <laughs> more harmless in this case because now yeah. this really he is just an asshole sorry but yeah he is an he asshole is. this episode he, he is actually planning to go to all the other ponies and screw them over to take their gems and not care about the pet from the very yeah. beginning this was his plan all the time and and then he is incapable of even looking after the pets when it time. comes, comes okay. around to looking after yeah. them He's With guided completely cream. by his greed in this episode, but the, the funny yeah. thing is, the funny thing about this episode is, I actually agree that it it was funny, and uh, uh, Biter knows that I am uh, the type, uh, guy, uh, type of viewer who says, "Oh, it's funny, I like it." But yeah. in this case, in this case, even so, the funny moments I really liked, and also the Rainbow Dash uh, tank moments and everything. I was so annoying. Ugh. Yeah, I uh, hated Spike. <laughs> like, he was the protagonist, and our list is usually smarter than him. And suddenly, our list has got the, 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 the made a simple pet. Yeah, that, that's that. what I was saying. Um, <laughs> that in this case, I wasn't sure. Um, the framework normally of most stories, as I've said in my review, is that of a, you know, you have a protagonist someone that you empathize with, or at least you are interested in their story. Yeah. The thing is with Spike is he's utterly deplorable in his actions. Yeah. And not in a good way. Not in an but in I entertaining enjoyed that. way. And I enjoyed it a lot. Mind you, I'm not a big fan of Spike or Spike episodes. I usually just find them boring and don't care. Like uh, Dragon Quest or Secret of My Excess, I've never... Like really rewatch those episodes because I just I just never really cared about Spike. But in this episode, the fact that he's an asshole gave him just more character to me. Where instead of just being that that other pony, it was oh he's who's not a pony who's a dragon. But uh, 
Instead of that, it's like, oh, here we get to watch an asshole character on the show for once and just how everything... <laughs> just watch how much everything can just go wrong for him by the end and he can just totally get his come up and do this. And Actually, I, if you remember back, uh, he was pretty asshole in uh, Winter Wrap-Up. Yeah, he was kind of a, a... He was kind of mean to Twilight in that episode. There have been episodes where he's lazy. rude. Yeah, and there's been a lot of episodes where he's rude and lazy, but none where he's quite I'm as not much sure as about he is in this episode. He's not rude on purpose. He often just speaks his mind. It may be what you're thinking about when, in terms of rudeness. Mm. That if he says something, he immediately says it without thinking. Yeah. That is more just you know, a character flaw rather than a complete lack of judgment by being an asshole. Mm. And that's the thing that, um, for me, I'm not sure, and for A and Y Pony, uh, the change to make him an arsehole is a contrivance that we don't actually enjoy. I'm not sure. Well, it, I don't you find, don't actually I don't enjoy. Also, <laughs> what I said, also, reason I, I yeah. so... so yeah. Wait. Hello? Um, another reason uh, that this episode might have not had much substance to it was kind of out there is this is only the second episode by this particular writer... And that writer still might be being brought in to try to give him a chance to, you know, get into the flow of things. Well, for the record, Spike the is first not episode, really well. The, the first episode by uh, Corey since, Powell was fantastic. <laughs> you know, yeah. If you say so. But, uh, but, I think uh, that one also had difficulties also with pacing. also have this character, Spike, who anybody oh. getting into writing for the show goes back and looks at all those episodes... They don't get a really clear picture of what Spike's supposed to be. He's kind of flip flopping all over the place. I think that would happen for all of the ponies. Yeah, they're actually complex beings rather than one note dimensional characters. Yeah, but there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's an amount of which Spike is, uh... is not an asshole. So now he suddenly is. There's an extent to which they're complex, and there's an extent to which they're just inconsistent. And every character has their yeah. moments of inconsistency across the course of this show, which is one of the biggest reasons that I don't usually try to fault the show on on the like if a character if I, if somebody says oh this he's acting out of character this episode I go but what is his character because it's okay. it's changed a I lot. I can answer you know? that at least in the broadest of terms. In the sense okay. that if we have a character, for example, Twilight Sparkle, we say she is the student of Celestia and she is the librarian. She is often very focused on her work. You know, we have a very basic framework from which we always work yeah. from and where she always operates. For Spike, he is always what? Number one assistant. He is the baby dragon. That's not what I would think of when I think of Spike. I think of I, I think Spike of Spike as... as an assistant because he has always been an, an assistant. Yeah, he has always been an assistant. So how can you not think, think of him, him as, as an assistant? Brother. I yeah. think I just think of him as I don't know. I just kind of think of him as the the one who is who is there to be the straight man to everyone else, or occasionally. If he's if it's his episode it, it, to not be the straight man. No, well, I, if you listen to my examples, these are what they are in the show, hmm. not what role they play in episode to episode. It is what they are in the show. For example, Fluttershy is the caregiver. She looks after the animals. She is often very shy. We know that kind of basic framework. And for Spike, I would say the framework is he is the assistant. And he is often quite a good assistant, or at least in the past. Sometimes. Yeah. For the most part, yes. Yeah, for the most part, he is definitely a, a decent Sometimes assistant. he overworks and he goes to sleep. Sometimes he really likes ice cream, and when there is no repercussions on it, then he acts. But I would argue that Spike is an assistant and generally quite a competent one. Now we have a guy who you couldn't trust anything with, who is a complete asshole. Yeah. I would say this is a complete reversal of even the most basic character archetype or role in the show. I can see where you're coming from with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just I can't, you know, put in the asshole who you couldn't trust anything with with number one assistant. Hmm. They don't match for me. Yeah. Yeah. From my view, though, and you categorize 
what each of them is. I've never actually seen him as number one's assistant. I've seen him as either younger brother to Twilight or adopted son of Twilight. And that's the view I've always seen of Spike. Not so much an assistant as, uh, I don't know. Well, she remember the way um, it, you, know? you have misunderstood the question. The question okay. was, what is the framework that they place within the show? What is the basic thing that we can say about said character? Yes, that is Spike's relationship with Twilight, and we see Spike with Twilight the most time. So what you gain off from Spike is his relationship with Twilight. However, you know what? the reason they are together is because of him being the assistant. Uh, ANY, I think you just typed that into the wrong you place. Just copy paste to the chat because uh, I believe I'm the only one with two screens. Uh, so I'm one oh, I have two screens. I could be reading the chat. Oh, I just didn't think okay. of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just thought I integrate the chat a little bit in our chatting, our chatting. Oh, interesting. Yeah, um, uh, yeah, I only have one screen. I'm afraid I'll freeze up again if I bring up. <laughs> no, no, don't do anything. You will freeze. <laughs> the, well, um, I guess what I'm what I'm about to say is that uh, you've you've said it in your um, your definition of Spike, and I don't disagree with it because it's you know it's it's there. But the fact that you see him that way, and that me um, and no, uh, the question, if you remember, is. What uh, is uh, what was it? What is um, Spike's role? What is his in role in the show? show? I think yeah, it's ill-defined. I didn't. You you framed my um, my question as what I thought. However, yes, my question because is, it's not necessarily definitive if we don't see him that way. That just means that they've done a bad no. job of setting him up as that. Well, if what, we don't all uh, agree that that's that what he is. The question is framed as what the show actually uses him as. What's the most basic framework we can do? Yeah, but what is can that? You, is that you frame, have an is idea the framework, of what is. is the framework of him being an assistant correct or incorrect? Of him being an assistant, yes. Of him being okay. the number one assistant is in question. Okay, let's discuss that in more detail. <laughs> Unfortunately, I haven't rewatched my Spike episodes recently to pull up a lot of specific examples as to why I would or wouldn't think of him that way. I can only I say that my personal coming into this episode, what I took into this episode with me about Spike, was not that. And that's the most that I can say about why I don't feel this, uh, this idea that he is the... That that's what he is. It's what Twilight uses to describe him in the Our Wishes episode. The number one assistant? Yes, many times. And that actually plays into his internal conflict mm. when there is a problem where Our Wishes. That he, he wants to actually possibly leave because he has lost his position as number one assistant. Uh, he is called number one assistant because he was portrayed as a good assistant in that episode. Mm. Generally, also, during most of the episodes, he is portrayed as a fairly efficient assistant. You know, he does the job for the most part. Yeah. You know, uh, and he is often more socially competent than Twilight herself. The problem usually starts when uh, he is a uh, focus of an episode. So as a supportive character, he usually is more assistant type. Yeah. With a, par uh, with a few snarky remarks uh, here and there. And yeah, yeah. The, the problem is really most of the time in episodes where he has uh, too much screen time. And yeah. Because it's you know it's inconsistent. It's mm -hmm. that's the, that's the that's What's the thing you have to deal with in My Little Pony is that the what characters are going to. Well, like he just said, whenever he gets an episode to himself, it starts to mess with his character. Where one time well, all of a sudden he's a bad assistant, and then all of a I sudden he's a yet. dick. Um, this episode, yes, he has been become a dick. However, in other episodes, um, let's see. There's uh, Secret of My Assess when, yeah, he becomes very greedy. Yeah. And it's a story about how he goes over the top. But uh, that's um, probably supposed to be his dragon DNA, yeah? Yeah, it's... But I don't see why that wouldn't apply to this episode, too. Well, in this episode, is, it isn't played in the same way, is it? 
because he does not become more of an ad he does not grow up as a dragon. And yeah. The thing where I see the difference to this episode and also to um, uh, Party for One, that's what somebody mentioned in the chat, uh, where he also is uh, only wants to get his jewels. In um, uh, Secret of My Excess and in Party for One, he was acting out of impulse. He saw something and he just wanted it. So it was in Party for One more like a childish greed and in Secret of My uh, Excess the dragon greed. But this time he, he he's... This is really often his choice. Uh, I don't know. Just I mean, in this episode, the moment when he starts to become driven by greed is when Fluttershy gives him the emerald. It's the same kind of set-off where in Secret of My Excess what set him off was somebody gave him something and then he wanted more somethings. Mm. And in this episode... We don't see him being specifically greedy until Fluttershy gives him this or offers him this giant emerald, and he goes, "Oh, I want that. I'll take care of your bunny. I don't care. Just whatever. I'll just do it, you know." And then he takes the emerald, but then he spends except, the rest of the except, episode wanting um, more. Except that when he says whatever, is out of character. Him wanting something, sure, but we have seen that while he is not in greedy mode, he is uh, a sentient mind. <laughs> And I believe it wasn't the same greedy mode like in Secret of My Excess. Uh, he was really like, he just had his own gems and he was too um, he uncontrolled to and ate them because out of, uh, yeah. Uh, he was able to control eating stuff. all the gems when he was mining with rarity. For example. <laughs> and he was generous enough by his own <laughs> character to give away that one gem to try and rescue rarity. And he, yeah. and he even was uh, self-controlled enough to uh, collect all the gems he now wanted to use for his cake because at the beginning he said, he, I believe when he's still singing, yeah. he's like, oh, I uh, collected all this gems. Exactly. For he is an idiot from the very first second it. that um, he immediately eats all those gems he got from somewhere. And he can't even control it, like with the very last scene where he still can't control himself. And, and oh, I still don't oh. get why there's cookbooks for gem cakes. Like, how many dragons or baby dragons have <laughs> Actually, I have no problem with this. This is a suspension of disbelief. So, yeah, there is a gem cookbook, and Twilight even asks about who this it, will it, be. It, 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 makes, it makes the cake's um, special gem um, cupcake a lot less special, which is a bit sad. Mm, that's true. But well, like it, it was like we just, you know, invented something, and here, here, just for you, Spike, you know, something special. Well, actually, no, they just produce, like, the smallest of the gem cakes. It's kind of a letdown. Yeah, but theirs is probably the Another... most delicious, because they're, they're artistes. They are, they are the best at what they do. Well, uh, we don't know how much they um, take things from recipes or invent them themselves. Um, that time they said it was something special, though, didn't they? <laughs> I'm going to bet that they're, they're it's the It's not special I mean, anymore, is it? The, the point, though, is they made something special, and it's not so special anymore. Actually, this episode destroyed two special things. That's the mm, other if one. We, if we go back to other the whole thing like about, the value, about the value of gems, if gems really are that valuable and Rarity can get them so much, is she really that generous giving her friends free clothes? It's not like she really needs the revenue or anything. And um, think about the size of the gem she gave Spike. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, but, okay. I'll Fred just look after Opal. Here, I have this tiny, tiny, tiny gem. <laughs> so, for what it's worth, that's probably about what, what babysitting the cat was actually worth. <laughs> Considering that gem's enough to buy a fucking industrial, industrial size <laughs> hair dryer. <laughs> Right, it's done just for the last. That hair dryer was I great. I believe by now Except everybody knows. Except it was kind of I vacuous. I believe by now everybody knows what I think about rarity and element of generosity. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Though, what do you guys think about the actual? I mean, you got the humor, but what about the pacing of the story? The stuff that goes on. I was. I thought it was great. That's, I don't know how to get into the. Well, um, the. Uh, what, wait, what? Yes. A and Y? Uh, you said don't do it. It was a trap, and you fall for it. Yes. Oh, I know, but I, I like everything about this episode. There's nothing I can like be 
negative about where I can't say, well, oh, um, I guess the pacing was kind of wrong. I mean, I just loved everything in this episode and no problems with it at all. Uh, yeah, even though to some it may completely degrade his character, makes the uh, gems things. I, d- I guess because I don't care about Spike's character is probably why it doesn't really affect me at all. Because I and really stuff just we've don't about care gems. about Spike. Uh, that's the thing, though. Um, in this episode, Spike is the protagonist, or at least he seems to be the central character we follow for the majority of its length. Why do you care about the events that go on if you don't care about the character on screen? Just because it was funny, and it was fun to watch. It was fun to watch him get his come up, and it's yeah. fun to watch all the animals be great, and the, the Cutie Mark Crusaders were, to me, the highlight of the episode, the way that they acted. And the Even though the Cutie Mark Crusaders they... aren't the focus. The focus is on yeah. Spike, who you do Well, you don't need for. to like the episode for the focus. There's well, a lot of different the... reasons you can like an episode. Yeah, however, for those who are interested in, who want to get involved in the story... One has to empathize with the characters, not just laugh like a child whenever funny stuff goes on. Well, I don't agree with that. I think you can like an episode for whatever reason that you happen to like it. Yes, and, and I just stated specific. one way that someone could like it. Yeah. How can you disagree that that is some way someone could like it? It is a way that someone could like it. Then I'm why did that... you disagree? Because you said that was the only way. They said that I, you no, should I like it. You for added that, that meaning. I did not say it was the only way. I said that some people could be involved in the story by empathizing with the character. I remember hearing the word the should. No, I did not use the word only, however. If you are well, adding meaning to what should. I said, you this, are not taking what this I've said correctly. Is recorded. We can check it later. Yeah. Yes. I did not mean only. I, I did only, not mean I only. I did not mean only. I said that one way that people could be engaged is by this way and not just by laughing. This shows there are two ways in my initial argument that there, people could enjoy the episode. I am sure there are more. Right, that then. one could be involved oh, in the characters and the, people, and the events going on. Others could be just securely entertained by funny stuff going on. How good is it in terms of plot, which I would relate to people who want to get involved in the story and the characters? Was it good plot-wise in terms of pacing? You said it did, but you didn't care about it because you found it funny. Yeah. How have you thought about it since you didn't care about it? Wait, what? Have you thought about the plot pacing if you actually don't care about it? Uh, I really only think about the pacing of the show when it's bad, usually. When, then, I, when I notice that it's bad. Then how can you claim it is good or bad if you haven't thought about it? Well, because it wasn't noticeably bad. <laughs> Except you overlook plot and pacing if you find what is on screen funny, which you did. And well, as you far have, as I'm concerned, haven't thought about it. Natural. So you answered a question you haven't thought about. Hmm. You just automatically fair, said yeah. it was good because you found it funny. Yeah, but I think it's a fair argument to say um, that uh, when one aspect was not noticeable bad, that it probably wasn't too bad. Uh, right. That's how I feel about pacing in general, in, in just about any work. If you don't, if the pacing you feel, if you're not even like noticing the pacing, then it's it's not a problem, you know. Except Bad you're just enjoying funny moment from funny moment to funny moment. But all I, it, I didn't all feel it has that was to do is pacing. So, if it's funny, yeah. If it's funny consistently throughout the whole episode, you won't ever feel like, oh, now I'm bored. You know, I didn't ever have that emotion. That's what pacing is. Is how yeah. How does it keep if your if you're talking about pacing of funny moments, then that was enough for you to go through the episode. Yes. Good. How about plot pacing of plot? Uh, I haven't thought about that, it. That is probably the honest answer. Okay. So when I, um, we'll have to look back in the past, but uh, did I say pacing or just pacing of plot? I'm not sure. Uh, well, anyway, I felt that the pacing of the plot was, hmm, for one trying to get involved in the characters and the events, it felt odd, particularly tone-wise. Hmm. In the sense, I couldn't empathize with Spike because he was being an asshole. Yeah. But events revolve around Spike. So do I want Spike to be 
revealed as being an arsehole? Do I want him to, you know, learn something that he is being an arsehole? Do I want him to cover up him being an arsehole? <laughs> I'm so putting an asshole counter in the bottom of <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and the worst part is I started it. I was the first one to say asshole. Oh, no, uh, me and DG uh, had a bit on DeviantArt. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I called him an asshole, asshole in his comment section on his uh, oh. on his review. So <laughs> he, he it was already an asshole, yeah. it was already in the public consciousness at that point. <laughs> yeah, I haven't I haven't even had time to check his review and the comments. Yeah. <laughs> um, his the review th- is basically what he's just said. He's very very much did not like the episode and found it to be bad of Spike's character and badly paced and everything else. I. I had difficulty understanding what this episode was going for. If it was going for funniness, I wasn't laughing because Spike was an arsehole. And if it was going for a story, I wasn't laughing because Spike was an arsehole and was spending a lot of time with, uh, uh, with the arsehole. <laughs> I think it was more of a filler and a platform for the next episode. That's it, isn't it? It's because... that's, that's also true, that it's obviously setting up for the next episode. Yeah. Because you have all the mention of, you know, the game guy coming to uh, the Crystal Empire, they're going to greet him, and you don't see what they do in the Crystal Empire, which is supposedly what's going to be what the it, next episode is all about. Isn't that thing over, though? Because the so this is, main six came back. Yeah, but it's going to, the next episode but will I take place with what the they were doing while they were there. It's actually takes place. Yeah, they'll yeah, be, like, this is kind of at the a, same time. Look at what's going home. Yeah. What's going on at home while this is going on? Yeah. Um, okay. Um, I sort of viewed it in this episode's context as very similar to Spike at Your Service as the homework for Twilight. A way to get the main six out so Spike could mess up things by on his own. And yeah, we'll see next week. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it, in, this ep- in this episode, it, yeah. fl- it fills a similar role. Get Twilight, the one we've seen before, and when we've seen her and Spike before, you know, they are both not arsehole and not retarded. So it's going to be disingenuous if we see them both together. So let's just move out all that past difficulties and leave Spike on his own to be an arsehole. That's an interesting point. I'm yeah. happy. Twilight's, Twilight's the kind of character who uh, she's really smart and stuff, so if you've got an episode that can't have somebody spoiling it early on, she's given the stupid ball. Which yeah. ticks off fans yeah, a lot when it happens. Because mm. that's what that's what Biter's saying is that you know if she had been around she would have nipped this in the bud, but she was gone. Because obviously she caught on as she was leaving, but not enough to uh, to put a stop to it. It's a it's a bit weird. Like um, everyone in that episode, like particularly before like the main six, they acted as if Spike was responsible. But from his actions in that episode, it's obvious he is not responsible. So the characters are acting as if. His prior characterization is still uh, around, when obviously now he's an arsehole for some reason. Hmm. Yeah, but he was also something he's never been before, which is extremely focused this episode. He was, like, looking tunnel vision at his uh, yeah. trying to get this cake finished, almost the way that uh, Twilight was tunnel vision in her studying of that other episode, ah. where she couldn't be interrupted by anything... And it does semi change a person when they are that focused on yeah. a thing. Which episode was that? The one where Twilight was that focused? The Spike at Your Service, actually. That's the other one. Spike at Oh, your yeah, service. that's what you meant. Yeah. And that, uh, that's, was that the one you were talking about, or did you mean a different episode? No, you meant yeah. that one. No, that's the one I was talking about. Okay. You, I've had friends and other people who, when they focus on something, to the exclusion of everything else, they uh, lose most of their restrictions and other stuff of their politeness and stuff that they'd usually be around you. In fact, when they realize what they've done, they usually come begging you not to hate them for how they treated you while they yeah. were doing it. Yeah, there's an element of relatability for me with that, because I'm kind of an asshole like Spike in real life, so I kind of, I, I kind of overlook some of his actions because it's the kind of thing I would do is swindle people out of their money out of something that I'm probably not going to actually do. So... <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> maybe, that's why, maybe that's why Spike being an asshole isn't that big a deal for me, because I'm also kind of a dick. And you can find it funny. 
Mm. Yeah, that's why I could find it funny because I'm like, it's oh, just that's, that um, that's so mean. he isn't. <laughs> he hasn't been. I mean, he has been focused before though. Um, when he became focused on gems in a previous story, he mm. became more like an adolescent and then a full-blown dragon. As yeah. well, not gem. You know, he started off with a gem and then he started collecting everything. That um. But in that, in those, in episodes when he is, um, I mean, we always see that he has like temptation when mm -hmm. he's like with Rarity and trying to collect the gems. The thing is that even the particular point with Spike, when he is a full-blown dragon, is that he remembers his prior generosity and character, yeah. and that re that restricts his focusedness. Mm. That um, Spike has his inner, you know, he he can understand other yeah. social beings and how to act for them. The only difficulty is that his nature is to be focused on collecting gems and objects, mm. and that has been his redemption in past. In this episode, however, he there's has no absolutely well, there's no redemption, and he has absolutely none of that depth. Yeah. I definitely will will agree with that. That this is not this does not expand his character the way that Spike at your excess did. Where, in, I mean, in, yeah, it, 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 it before he was yeah before he was redeemed, and we often see that he has a certain um, understanding of other people than other the, some others don't. For example, in Lesson Zero, he's the only true friend to Twilight Sparkle. Hmm. Um, we all, you know, he is, um, you know, sometimes quite competently socially speaking, and in this episode, all of that was left on the cutting room floor to leave him to be an asshole. And in that regard, it is a degradation of his character, not just a, a lack of expansion. <laughs> yeah, I hate Angel too. <laughs> <laughs> Um, For our viewers who are going to be viewing this without the original stream comments, uh, in the comments, Ardawen said, Oh, Angel needs more time with Discord, in my opinion. Angel was a fluffy little bastard, and he needs to be punished for it again. <laughs> yeah, they didn't pay that off in that episode, did they? They have all this interaction with Angel, Angel Bunny and Discord, and, and, I'm and still, Angel and, doesn't get his own back. <laughs> and I'm still angry with Angel for uh, putting a hoof down. I mean, I, he was I just, the main person who treated Fluttershy like a doormat, and he is her yeah. pet for Christ's sake. Yeah, um, going back to this episode, <laughs> um, I, all I knew going into it was the title, and I assumed it would be about the pets, but as our discussion has shown, the pets don't play that much into it. It's mostly about Spike. What do you guys think about the pets? They seemed mostly like um, set dressing. As far as um, as far as uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Support characters go in this episode. I think they were fun. Not all of them get to do much. Like uh, yeah, uh, what's the cat's name? Opal. 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 Opalescence didn't get to do anything. Um, Actually, yeah. No, I saw a few things with Opalescence that was really interesting. You've got first her first interaction with Tank hits him on the head. Right afterward. She does the cat, you know, rub against him thing. Mm. So you've got a general weird interaction with the other pets with her. Yeah. yeah Before was... you always saw anybody get near her, she'd just, you know, freak out and try to claw them to death. Yeah. But in this one, you actually see her semi uh, nice to other pets, except when they do something that pisses her off, like uh, mess with her bed or something. Yeah. And she even uh, interacts in a positive way with other animals. Um, when uh, Angel is doing his uh, ego trip again, you see Spike like, Angel! And all the other animals group behind him and look like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and then for a, a strange thing, um, I believe uh, Owlicious is carrying, who is he carrying? The, the, the two flying pets are carrying other... Yeah. They were carrying Spike. Actually, in uh, yeah, in the, they actually in lift his body weight. Uh, yeah, but uh, this is one of the earlier scenes when they are still on the um, string. But later on, when he already when uh, Angel is on the train, mm -hmm. and and they all spot Angel on the train, and the other animals are like, "Oh God damn it, Angel is doing it again!" And then they move into the train, and the two flying pets hold other pets. Like uh, mm -hmm. I believe, Olicious is holding Gummy. And a tank is actually carrying uh, opalescent for. 
This is real that's interaction. Some, that's some good that's old-fashioned uh, MLP attention to detail right there. Yeah. yeah. Actually, yeah. Tank carries the opalescence mm -hmm. twice. I think that time it's good. The second time is just hilarious when you see opalescence just, you know, spinning around as yeah, she hangs the very on. last <laughs> everybody is greeting the cats and this too. Uh, yeah, it, it's that's really sad because, uh, because there was this love for detail in this episode on a lot of little occasions, but yeah. it was there, uh, yeah, I guess it, uh, it was, uh, had all been done by um, uh, the animators mainly. Yeah, yeah, the animators general. always definitely add a lot to the episode beyond the writing stage and their attention to what they're, just all the little flourishes they throw in. Yeah, yeah. Um, like uh, Alalicious uh, prowling around after Angel Buddy. Yeah, I love all of Alalicious' facial expressions, that he's able to be so expressive without any words, where he gives this spike, this look like uh, towards the beginning, where he looks at him like, hey, dumbass, you're the one who ate the jewels, you know, and like holds the screwed up. Like an idiot. Yeah, he, he gets guys like, like this truly perfect yeah. face, where he's just like, dude, Even like, so somewhat he... angry and mostly just annoyed. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Face. That's a great ad that they gave him expression, because he hadn't uh, had a lot of them uh, in the past. Yeah. He hasn't been around much. This as well, yeah. Um, but... the, the, the thing I have, though, is, um, yeah, there are these little moments, but the focus of the story ain't on the sidekicks. The sidekicks, apart from those little bits and moments here and there, are generally can be described as nuisances or just hangers-on. It's always about the central plot with you, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is or, um, the, uh, you know, it's what the episode is doing is its central focus. And this central focus is different from previous seasons, which is why I probably don't like it. Yeah. yeah. My, Actually, my problem with previous se well, what I liked in previous you... seasons was it was about the character interactions. That, you know, like uh, the, sleep, the sleepover episode, all you do is you have three characters in the sleep house and you just let them interact. And... In this episode, there could have been an interesting time to expand the pet characters and have them interact because they all have very, you know, different physiologies and attitudes and behaviors. Mm -hmm. um, and it didn't do that. What did the episode do? It played a lot of events out for slapstick. Before, in well, seasons one and two, it wasn't slapstick. It played mostly to the characters. Yes, sir. Actually, one thing I've noticed, this... This season has had a lot of, you know, recycled plots from other cartoons and other stuff. Mm -hmm. It seems semi-lazy, which, and it's also shorter than other seasons. What I've always wondered is, since they write several things at once, is it possible that the writers are right now focusing on season four? This whole season could almost be a semi-filler as they put their real efforts. I don't efforts. know. No. I don't know if I buy that. Because no. on the one hand, also, there's been plots from other seasons that were also used in other cartoons. Um, I, th yeah. I, don't, I can't think of any right off the top of my head, but I remember seeing people who would point out stuff like uh, uh, one with people. Hearts and Who's Day was an episode of Powerpuff Girls, uh, for instance, like that happened almost exactly the same way. So uh, there's always been that sort of element, which is just a cartoon thing. Every cartoon goes through a lot of uh, of Many these stories episodes. are similar to previous yeah. ones, and it doesn't even matter if it's recycled. It matters yeah. whether you can make the story interesting. Yeah, you know, there's so many retellings yeah, of they do. classic tales like Romeo and Juliet, and yeah. all of them are quite, you know, quite a lot of them are quite good, even though they are the same story. Yeah, and I mean, it's a classic statement I'm trying to think of anybody who said it, but that uh that, you know, every plot has been done before. It's just about whether or not you can yeah, do it well. <laughs> yeah. Genre versus literature. If anyone's seen that from uh, Tasteful Understated Nerd Rage. I have not. Where people often take tropes from before in the past because we know they work. Yeah. And then reuses them in a yeah, more modern, just, contemporary sense. Like I, I know I brought up TV tropes in the last episode. But I think you guys said you don't really read it much, but I've read like all of TV tropes, and it's always just, you know, you just it's it's a site where you just read about a trope and everything it's ever been in and how they used it, you know, and uh, you can get lost on that site forever. <laughs> yeah, they <laughs> they very describe nice. patterns. Uh, they yeah. don't totally describe analysis. What I was going to say about the writers, which was um, what Mr. Puppyface came up with, 
um, was that I, I put a quote in the chat uh, from some, a source from EQD where they said that M.A. Larson has gone to Little Pet Shop and Amy Keating Rogers going for Care Bears, which I would view as two, uh, two of the best writers of the show. The two of the best yeah. writers aren't around anymore, leaving us with Dave Polsky and Mary Ava Williams. Wait, who were they? Amy Keating Rogers, Rogers isn't... Isn't M.A. Larson the one who writes the final one of the season? Yeah, yeah he's he also done, wrote Magic he's done Duel. Two. Um, but he he was more, you know, those two writers were a lot more, a lot of writers were actually a lot more around in previous I seasons. didn't know that Amy Keating Rogers was gone. Didn't she write Applebug season? That's like the best episode. What the hell? For you, yeah. Yeah, um... What I was saying, though, the, uh, the way I feel about it is Hasbro is moving its better writers to its other shows, and it is leaving us with... Uh, I don't agree at all. ...the more Mac writers. I Dave really... Polsky and Matthew Alpha Williams. I love Dave Polsky, though, so I completely disagree. I mean, despite how um, well, Pete Collins because... are on, we have yeah, established... Uh, it's an obvious <laughs> distinction, however, that you can obviously just enjoy pure slapstick. That if yeah. something is just throwing funny after funny after funny, you and don't mind thing what the thing going should, on is behind I it. I should probably mention is that I'm also not nearly as big a fan of season one of this show as I am of seasons two and three, which is yeah. something that I've realized much later that was like a lot of people really, really loved season one, and I didn't become like a giant fan of the show until season two. But I still think two is better than three, so I kind of don't want to like... I don't want to be like, oh, three is the best, though, because that's not how I feel. I, th I think for me, um, season three is a very different, obvious tonal shift in the sense that yeah, it's it definitely much feels more that slapstick, that it's a lot more smiling and, lo and pointing right at the camera. You know, it, it's trying on purpose to be funny, whereas before, the humor of the show was, you know, it was a, it was a sprinkle on top of what was going on generally. It complemented the show. It wasn't the focus of the show. Yeah, the focus has gone to the funny stuff. And the funny stuff on its own isn't enough for me. It's, for me, bad children's TV programming. Uh, Funniness without any reason to be engaged in it, other than the fact that I've been engaged in previous seasons. I just can't. I can't agree with that. I just love it too much. I love every episode of this show, except for yeah. Ghostbusters. Well, it's not. Um, when you say when you say agree, it, it's a question of either understanding or appreciating it. Not that you have to change your mindset to yeah. equate it. I mean, I, All I, I kind of, is. I understand where you're coming from, but I don't know that it's true because I haven't rewatched enough season two where I can say, "Oh yeah, I agree that it's moved in the direction of slapstick." Where if I then go back and rewatch season two, I might go, "Oh well, actually, there was a lot of slapstick here too." You know, the episodes like, I, I haven't. I, you for might slapstick. be right, but I haven't seen. I I can't personally agree until I've confirmed it. You know. Yeah, it's just I think. A lot of the favoritist episodes of the show haven't. I, I don't know. I don't think of them as the slapstick ones. Mm. They're often the ones where it's we watch the characters do something. Yeah. We watch them go through an arc. That the show, the reason people liked MLP in the first place was because girls' TV programming didn't have to stuck. That it had a sense of maturity to it. That's why it has so many mature viewers. Mm. That. It had interesting characters and um, story arcs. It no, wasn't teach just you without talking down to you. Yeah, yeah. It 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 wanted you know it it was it told mature stories or at least more mature than just hey children look a pie to the face. <laughs> oh look children <laughs> shoot thing. Oh, look, oh pie to the face. Somebody make a gif out of this. <laughs> out of him doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the new meme. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but that's why that's why I sort of feel so depressed with season three. Is it represents the very thing, the very antithesis of why we got into MLP in the first place. I'm not saying that the whole thing is bad. I I, I think it's just these slapstick centric episodes rub me the wrong way. Because I've seen the the potential of the show mm. in previous seasons, where you know I enjoyed the characters and the arcs in a more mature yeah. fashion. 
than just yeah, points I to the face. I can definitely agree that there has not been an episode this season. Looking at, I'm, I'm looking at a list of MLP episodes so that I can yeah, try yeah. to wrap my head around uh, whether or not I agree with the slapstick uh, claim. Because I do think there's there's episodes in season two that are pretty much just about slapstick, but there's also a lot that are... But and there's a lot of them that are a character arc that just isn't done well at all. Like uh, the last yeah. roundup is kind of just a terrible episode it's because it doesn't Jack really it. accomplish it. Yeah, it doesn't accomplish anything though. Like with her character, <laughs> so you know I'll take an episode that is what to me is great slapstick over a character arc that completely failed. You know because it, it just wasn't a good episode. But In, uh, well, you see, um, it's a question of what direction the writer should go for, right? And for me, I preferred it when they were going for they were going for those were mature arcs, and they were trying to do succeeded. character arcs. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You can try and not succeed, but at least you're trying not to suck. Yeah. But now they're not even bothering with that. They're just sucking. <laughs> yeah, I get where you're coming from with that. Um, yeah, the biggest character arc episode this season was definitely Wonderbolt's Academy, and oh, no. that was probably my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Bloody Wonderbolts Academy. I haven't, I haven't read your review. Second so worst you have episode ever. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what you have against that episode. My favorite episode of the third season. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Uh, this kind of worms again. <laughs> uh, that sounds like a lot. Uh, Probably a discussion might... for another stream. Uh, yeah. By, by just yeah. my discussion about the, discussions about this episode where one actually started us uh, video chatting and later on starting this uh, stream. So I see. We <laughs> have discussed this for many hours as well. <laughs> uh, Does one of you like it or you just both hate it and you just rail on no, no, it? It's it is my favorite episode of season three. Oh, okay, so you like it, yeah. Yes. Yeah, he, I like, he, it's my favorite like, episode of season three too. Yeah, uh, digi uh, digital high five. Uh, Yay. Digital slow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's one of my favorite episodes of the whole show, actually. I just loved everything about it. No. Uh -huh. There's Lesson Zero. There is... Yeah, Lesson Zero is top tier. I mean, I'm not saying it is the number one, because my number one is still, without question, Apple Bucks season. That is by far my favorite episode of the show. Well, it's funny, too, because... Breakdown episodes. I just love the friggin' poems yeah, using their shit. Because it's about the characters. Does. Yeah, that's yeah. The, that's why I agree with you that the big character arcs have not happened this season. There's not been a big breakdown except for maybe Scootaloo in Sleepless in Ponyville. And I know you hate that episode too, and I love that episode, but I don't care as much about Sco Scootaloo as I do about like Applejack, who is would be my favorite pony if she ever got any fucking screen time. But uh. <laughs> Really? Want to make really really episode. You're going with fucking now. That's a lot bad enough. You're... The episode I want more than anything is I... Rarity's breakdown. I, want... Do I, have... I want to see her suppressed anger come out. <laughs> Did Rarity not have a breakdown? She had one right when um she had a when she became a crazy cat lady. Breakdown. She had some... yeah, it, it wasn't, wasn't a me. true breakdown. No, yeah, she didn't have one like. She didn't have like a Pinkie Pie or Twilight Sparkle breakdown. You look at her, she's always making these faces like she wants to kill somebody, then suppresses it, and then has the serene yeah. face Does again. She? But that's... that's, that's, that's right her she's trying her hardest to, to be proper and not, you know, and not uh, over... over no, I, I never got like that violent vibe from her. It's not... I, I don't know that it's violent towards other people. Violent or angry. Yeah, because she'll be just I the worst that. possible thing. It's more like that. That's her being melodramatic. Isn't yeah, it? I don't see any anger in that. Drama queen. So, but yeah, she never had a real breakdown. She was still doing drama, and I, be I believe this. Uh, it's a fashion uh, show episode. It's supposed to be a breakdown episode. The one where she's making yeah. the dresses in season yeah. one. Yeah, become a crazy cat. Lady. I'm wallowing in. Whatever ponies wallow in. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, but she was still. She, she. It wasn't really a mental breakdown. She was just really depressed and was like, "Oh, everything is gone now." But she was still a, uh, in control of herself. And in the yeah. other episodes, they have the crazy eyes. Yeah, Sonic Rainbow, Rainbow. Uh, in Sonic Rainbow, Rainbow Dash was actually frightened beyond anything. Um, uh, oh, nice little parallel to school, by the way. Uh, uh, 
Twilight and Lesson Zero, nuts completely. The Applejack and Applebug season, totally out of her mind because of sleep, uh, sleep devastation. Yeah. Who am I missing? Apparently has a lot deprivation. of deprivation. The word you're looking for is deprivation. I, I, yeah, Fluttershy at the gala, right? Because you're gonna love me! <laughs> I all the other times Fluttershy was... I, I, I would say, um, for me, Rarity has a lot more um, small bits yeah. where she yeah. has stuff going on with her. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the thing with a breakdown episode, uh, the, one, the, the, one, the great thing about the ones that have worked is they have actually portrayed the characters visibly well enough that um, yeah. Twilight is, is a very focused character on what she works on, and so you can imagine her getting too focused on her um, uh, being tardy. In uh, Party of One, Pinkie Pie is one who always likes to, um, you know, please others and uh, throw past. Can I just, can I just so address this comment somebody left? Friends... He said Fluttershy yeah. comes across as someone who is on heavy meds for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not entirely sure where that came from, but I it's love that a, comment. It's from a Adam. great relation the whole time. Adam was also the one who compared Spike and his gems to uh, drugs. Uh, yeah, yeah, um... I was, say, that's, I don't know, maybe a little bit more apt than just Fluttershy coming across like she's on heavy meds. I'm not entirely sure what he means. What kind of meds do you mean, Arduin? The, the, the funny part is, is we are about five to ten seconds behind, so it will take a moment until he's able to, uh, capable, uh, able to answer. Probably, yeah. Um, yeah, but the point was that the breakdown episodes is they are possible extensions of the characters, that you haven't taken them out of character. Um, with Rarity, though, she is quite complex and quite mature quite a lot of the time. So making her have a full breakdown episode, uh, it would be really hard yeah. to do a setup. It would have to be something that genuinely would uh, would set her off on that level. And I mean, yeah, uh, losing her chance on the fashion industry thing, we've already By done. The way, That's the thing that would happen. Um, Rarity, season three, where is it? Oh, she's too complex for this simple slapstick. Just push her to the side. You see, <laughs> you see, Rarity is a complex character. She got slapped so hard by the stick, she's off the screen. Yeah, she's a complex character. It's kind of hard to make her make fun from her. Uh, she is complex, very complex. Well, I mean, that's what at one point I looked back on my season three retrospective. Um, you know, w when we had the break, was that the the show is uh, spending a lot more time with its simpler characters, i.e., mostly uh, at the time of speaking, characters like Spike or Pinkie Pie, ones that people don't know that well about, and you can sort of twist their characters without people realizing. But characters like Rarity, it would be harder to write a slapstick episode about her. So she's not really been around that much. She's just playing old hard to write episodes. I think she's gonna be there. I mean, we still have three more episodes left, so there's still plenty of time for them to make people. <laughs> oh, they've done every other character this season. It would be really a shame if they didn't do Rarity. Even if you don't like the episode and you call it slapstick and say that she's not deep enough, then only two more. Two more what? Episode. Only two more, two and more. one of them's about the Crystal Empire. Oh no! Well, no, the next episode. Spoilers. Without spoiling, yeah, the next spoiling. episode does sound like it could center around Rarity. Yeah, because it does sound like her kind of thing. I always go into these episodes completely yeah. blind, other than the title. Exactly, same here. Uh, and, the, and the author. <laughs> oh. I don't. I learn. I just thing. I read everything about it before I go in. Okay. And that, that sets your expectations, you see. Whereas I want to sort of view it as if... You know, I don't have a clue what's going to go on. I've never been much to like ignore. Like, I'm not spoilers. Much to, Pinkie for Pie hooks spoilers. up with Doctor Who's. <laughs> 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 they have to a introduce Doctor Who's character and then b try and get them hitched. Yeah, <laughs> I actually sometimes I like spoiling myself for things because of the fact that uh that I won't I I I some I just don't care to go into things blind as much. Like I don't I don't know. The idea of like, oh, it's fresh, and I'm seeing it for the first time, it really doesn't matter to me. It never has. It depends yeah, it... how they do the spoilers. The best best uh, people who make the movies are the ones who make those uh, trailers where they show you so much to get you excited, but it actually doesn't tell you anything about the movie. Yeah, exactly, and often the spoilers they give, is, isn't it like plot synopsis or... 
you know, roughly what. I don't know. I, I've go often, on. I have very often read what happens at the end of a movie before I ever see it, so I'm just completely uh, don't care about spoilers. Okay, but I do, and I believe. Yeah, by I, the I won't. I won't spoil yes. you. I've tried to avoid spoilers in my own videos because I know that people get mad at me because I've thought about being like, in the next episode we'll get to see this character for once and then I don't want a bunch of people going, no, I didn't want to know. No, Sometimes um, what I do is like uh, I guess something in my reviews from the um, the the name of the thing. So I'm saying, yeah. oh, keep calm, flutter on. It's probably got Fluttershy. This but is going to be interesting to see them doing slapstick with Fluttershy. You, you said earlier that you were expecting in this episode for it to be about the pets. And you had From set the yourself title. up for that expectation, whereas I already knew that it was going to be about Spike because I had, you know, read the synopsis. I didn't know. All I knew was about sidekicks. And I like to have Spike. the sense of like, okay, we're going to have a Spike episode, we're going to have this episode, and then I can like set myself up for how much In I'm going to like, like if I should yeah. get excited or not, you know. Like with the Discord episode last episode, it was like, oh, it's going to be a Discord episode. I, uh, way ahead I was of time. so angry. Discord of Fluttershy, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna not get excited because that sounds like it could be incredibly go either way, you know. But actually, about this one, Golden Fox put uh, a spoiler at the end of the, his uh, previous review, so I also know that it was about Discord. And I was angry about it. I was pissed. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I really. Golden Fox, dang you. <laughs> Have you golden fox? Um, He's a weird one. You got alarmed, uh, answer. Did he put it in the oh. uh, chat? Never mind. I'm not sure where it came from myself. She comes across like someone antidepressive or something. IDK. The true emotions are suppressed by meds or something. Sorry. <laughs> that, that, that's what my guess was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, that's pretty much what I thought he meant too. Uh, uh, yeah. Anyways, um... So, yeah. this episode, um... Oh, we haven't actually heard much other than it's funny, uh, as why you liked it. Oh, that's well, pretty much that's because pretty that's much all it. it was. I will not disagree that it's really nothing more than a filler. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna have plenty to say when I as I my video, but I might as well told, say uh, now. As I told the A and Y... Yes, as sir. I told A and Y when uh, he first asked me my opinion on this, uh... I said it was very funny, but didn't have much substance. Mm. No substance, and I didn't find it funny. For me, it's uh, the best part is the the animals and the the cutie mark crusaders make it fun for me. Just the, the the specific ways in which they screw over Spike, where like they get on the train and instantly they're all like, "Oh yeah, we get to go to the Crystal Empire," and I'm like, "Oh lord, now it's just all going wrong for him." You know, and he can't get it under control, and they're all excited about it and stuff. And it was it was fun for me to get to see that they were being. That that they were they kind of came into this episode out of nowhere and then got thrown into this completely out there it's situation. It's almost like seems a series of random, occurred. unconnected events. It's well, like, because um, it is a series of random, unconnected. Yeah, it's events. A, it, it is, and it's supposed to be because it's it's just random it stuff that's matter. happening to yeah. Spike. You know, where he ends up on this train with all these edibles and the Cutie Mark Crusaders, and things are just getting way out of hand. Where it's like, oh, they're suddenly going all the way to the Crystal Empire, and that sort of escalation was a. Uh, you know, got me excited. Where I was like, "Oh, cool!" And then they actually go to the Crystal Empire. I was like, "Wow, that that happened!" You know, and then they all end up on the train in the end. And you know, it's like, are they going to get found out? Is there's a little bit of tension there? Angel Bunny, you know, comes to the rescue with the gem and stuff. And I just, I had so much fun with this episode. I think, though, uh, for me, uh, because the episode is just a series of random events, that the, si the story's pacing is kind of bleh that the character itself is kind of bleh. Um, the final revelation didn't have any impact despite what it was trying to achieve in the sense of, don't be an arsehole and, oh, <laughs> you know, you don't have any gems again. It, it, it kind of falls flat for me. The whole th uh, that's, what, that's what I said in my review. That it basically, <laughs> the mean, whole I'm... episode plot-wise felt like a runaway train uh, and with no driver. Because the driver said he would go out, he just he said he would do he would jog alongside the train. Yeah, I'm <laughs> actually opening my own uh, video about this episode by just talking about how basically I'm resp like I start off by responding to yours just in saying, yeah, I knew this was going to be like this because when I watched the episode, the first thing I thought was. Oh, everyone's gonna have a different opinion about this. Everyone's gonna disagree. I'm gonna go on Reddit and I'm gonna well, see like a thread where half the people are saying this is my favorite episode of season three, and half of them are saying this episode is absolutely terrible. And then that's why I read your reviews because I wanted to see what uh what kind of I was like, huh. 
Spider's pretty opinionated. Let's see what he said about it. He generally hates season three. I want to know what he felt, and you completely yeah. hated it. And I was like, yeah, I saw that coming. So then I started off by citing that. I'm like, I totally get it. I totally get that it was going to be not sure a it's... hugely contentious episode. I'm not sure it's hate. It's sort of a- apathy. Yes. Hate, a- outright apathy. Which episodes and, do you and straight disappointment. up hate? Oh, well, there's... Um, there's the one I straight out hate, but um, in terms of its content and what it does and what it is, is Wonderbolt Academy. Uh, I so dislike that. Um, I, I don't know. I don't actively hate it. It's just that would be the one if I ever bothered feeling hate would be the one I yeah. hate. Oh, what um, about the, from other seasons? Is it just Super Sidey Squeezy that... 6000? Uh, oh, what 5, is that episode? Mainly because of the whole economy stuff in that. Yeah, the economy like, stuff is pretty broken. But... Uh, dumb economy is dumb. I hate it. <laughs> no hate for both Actually, I heard them talking about uh, that and how when they're doing the contest, it's like, look how many barrels you would have made a bunch of more money doing the 75% deal. But yeah. then again, they didn't know how much they could make how fast when the whole I deal have was... a simpler way of doing it. Like, yeah, and TV did the math, and it turns out that uh, in his video, and uh, it turned out that they actually would make a profit if they just would go with it. So yeah, what? Yeah, exactly. But they didn't they know did. that when the deal was presented. Because they are just some stupid farm people. And you don't saying? even need to do math. Like for me, I thought, okay, you sell your cider, your own cider at its own price, and then you make more cider with the machine because you have a huge excess of demand. You know, you're yeah, making X amount, at all. and then you, you make more barrels, and you sell, you know, more, which means you get Y, you know, Y times 0.25. Y times 0.25 plus X is bigger. That's it. You're, you're gonna, you, you've got excess demand. Yeah. Them ponies love that cider. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on. And it's probably even uh, without alcohol because it's a kids show. What? What's the? Oh, I think it has alcohol because I think somebody. Yeah, the fact that it foams. Uh, non-alcoholic cider is not supposed to foam. But like that. on the other hand, they make it fresh. So, uh, they um, create it and then they sell it right away. So where the apples already. Uh, uh, Alcoholic well, apples? I wouldn't put it past them. They have zap apples. They can have anything. Okay. It's magical ponies. I just really want to believe that they're all getting drunk. I think they just... <laughs> I, I, they, because they, I love apple cider. I started drinking it like soon after like you know seeing that. And well, then I, every time I drink it, I'm like, yeah, I didn't learn nothing. <laughs> well, the actual thing is that they probably... The prob- actually, the probable thing is that they um, didn't consider whether it was alcoholic or not and just treated it as, as if it wasn't. And mm-hmm. the reason they put foam is because you've got opaque tankards. So yeah. how do you show it's full? Exactly. Well, you show it's full by foam. Yeah. So that's I mean, why they did it. It's obvious that that's why they did it. But By the way, it is My Little Pony. It is Equestria, it. so the foam is simply magic. Yeah. <laughs> it magic could be foam. there's some there's some kind of um, fairy liquid at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> it gives extra or, or juice similar. to unicorn. Ah... Uh, <laughs> okay, nevertheless, uh, we are kind of uh, screwing around for uh, uh, 10 to 50 minutes now. Um, yeah, I... Final thoughts? Yeah, exactly. Somebody want to give some final thoughts? Uh, well, I don't know. I mean, liked I, the episode I just for the humor. I, I'll, I'll end if I want because I'm the most vocal on this episode. And you're the one who's not going to have a, a video to come out afterward. You've already done your writing on it, so yeah, we all I, have our own conclusions to I, reach later down um, the line. My, my review videos. structure is always on the day, a review, my initial thoughts, and then yeah. the, I do a second review afterwards and during the week, uh, a follow-up on a particular aspect of the episode. The only problem is, is that we had so many slapstick episodes, I've sort of gone, yeah, it's slapstick again. It sucks. What am I supposed to say? Um, anyway, this episode in particular, um, I'm kind of glad in a way that it sort of reveals Corey, pa- uh, the the guy who wrote this. What's his name? Corey Powell. Uh, Corey Powell. Yeah, I was right. Um, people sort of thought his sleepless so in Ponyville was deep. Is it, is uh, I think it's a girl. Because you kept saying she in your review. And yeah, I, I think confused. it's a girl. I, I think I looked at her Twitter and it has a picture of a girl on it, so I guessed it was a girl. Um, uh, but 
Chi last time, people quite liked Sleepless in Ponyville just because of the premise. But it has, in terms of a story and in empathy, didn't work as an episode. I actually found it pretentious rather than deep. And I'm slightly glad that uh, Just for Sidekicks has been the simple slapstick it has been again. And yeah, I think my final line of... You just don't want um, to like Corey Powell, is what you're saying. Um, I want to like her if she plays like to the show's strengths. What she I, isn't... For me, it was isn't. like... For me, I went into this episode going, oh, it's written by Corey Powell. I hope it's going to be good because then I can confirm that she's one of the good writers. You know? And then when, <laughs> Except, it, when yeah, I saw it and I, I liked it, I went, oh, yeah, she's, she's pretty good. She's one of the good writers. She's not Meriwether Williams. Though. Except instead, for me, it confirms she's a bad writer in terms of the show's <laughs> strengths and weaknesses. Uh, <laughs> but, the episodes are definitely odd. They definitely don't feel like any other writers' episodes. This was supposed to be an Ponyville. ending statement. <laughs> we started a new discussion. Um, but oh, yeah, if I you think... want to end it, we can. I mean, I don't <laughs> yeah. know why you have okay. to limit the, basically, the time. Yeah. Basically, the plot is a runaway train that's left the station because the driver thought he would just go for a short jog alongside it. <laughs> okay, this was the uh, final statement of the negative side. Now the team positive may say something as well. So, I, I just saw it as a fun episode. One of the reasons I like this series, uh, they can pretty much make their episodes go to all sorts of places, including just entertainment. This yeah. is on par with uh, Looney Tune episodes and stuff for me. Not necessarily My Little Pony episodes, but Looney Tunes and that kind of thing, mm. which is an enjoyable cartoon that I love to watch. Oddly enough, and part of the reason that I... That I when, it, when he keeps saying stuff about like slapstick and being just on par with other cartoons, is that I don't, I don't really like any other cartoons. Ex like, I mean, uh, American cartoons, other than My Little Pony and like a couple others, but there's none that I care about nearly as much. So, uh, so for me, when, when you guys say, oh, it's like on par with other cartoons, I go, no, other cartoons aren't this good. <laughs> I like this. I don't uh, like those, you know. I think um, one thing I said to my breather was the cast that we've been given you know, the main six and what yeah. else, they aren't the Looney Tunes cast. Yeah. This isn't their strength of slapstick. Their strength is generally more character episodes or breakdown episodes, if you will. Which is, yeah. Which is why I said it's on par with uh, Looney Tunes and not on par with My Little Pony episodes. Yeah. Well, because I do it, consider it, those a least, level above. At least Looney Tunes is written from the ground up to be slapstick, that it's characters... So you're trying to say that you think it's you think Looney Tunes is better than this, is what you're saying, Piter? Yeah, I would say it works better as slapstick, or at least it's not as much of a degradation of its characters. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, anyways, let's say, uh, wrap things up, because everybody can check out Writer's Written Review uh, on DeviantArt. I'll put the link in the description, as well as DigiBrony's review. I don't know when it will be out, probably before I upload the edited version of this uh, yeah, it could podcast. Be. So you can check out his channel as well. I'll put the description there. Just uh, I put the link in the description as well. My review should hopefully be up uh, around the end of the week because then I'm done with my exams. And I don't know, Scan, if you are going into episode reviewing uh, at all or... I'll, I'll be starting a series where I talk about specific things in episode, but not this one. Like I said, there's no substance, so nothing no. for me really to make anything so, about uh, if anybody goes to your channel, what MLP-related stuff will they find there right now? Um, right now, I've just got a couple commentaries I've done, but I'm looking into starting a series I'm going to call Into Deep, mm -hmm. where I just share ideas and hypotheses I get from stuff I've heard in the show that has really no way to prove whether I'm right or just, you know, looking too You should too start with Amnesia Field. <laughs> what? And Amnesia, Amnesia Field? field. The one thing we know about the Crystal Ponies is that they are forgetful, and now they are part of the Crystal Empire. So therefore, it's projecting a field of amnesia. Anytime the characters are out of character, it's due to amnesia. Okay. <laughs> Actually, my first one will probably be on the season uh, episode three conspiracy, because uh, episode I means season one, season three, season two, season three, and season three. <laughs> Okay, all three episode threes they've yeah. done all have a link. 
Oh that yeah, it's kind of bizarre. And if they like the that um, four, is that the one with the uh, the barn? So has, with Applejack's yeah, barn. Yeah, the first right? one they talk yeah. about. Yeah, they talk about how I want a new barn. Next season, Rainbow Dash destroys the barn. Third yeah. season, they raise the barn. Yeah. Ooh, oh, a pattern has emerged. Oh. We never so, see uh, barns in the show normally. So oh, I'd be curious if in season four there's some mention of Applejack's Yeah, it would be, it would be very interesting if... So, if, if you're interested in the uh, season, in the episode three conspiracy theory and mm -hmm. other commentaries and uh, in-depth uh, videos about MLP, check out Scan1 one, uh, 120. I'll put the link in the description as well. And I guess the, uh, we are all done for today. So, see you soon. <laughs>